what is going on guys welcome back to my channel and after the boston celtics won the championship everyone knows that the nba free agency is a wild period of time for fans media and players alike so in this video we're going to go over every signing that i have seen so far the only ones that i plan on missing are any that happens while the video is uploading so i'll go over some signings give them a grade maybe give my thoughts about them and try to give you guys everything that you need to know about how players have moved and my opinions on them so without further ado, let's get into the video of what's been happening since the Boston Celtics hoisted the Larry O'Brien. So the first free agency signing that I want to talk about is the Paul George deal to the Philadelphia 76ers. It is a max contract for Paul George. It's going to be four years, $212 million, which is around $53 million um, every year. And he rejected the offer from the Clippers, which is around $48 million per year so he is going to be forming what i believe to be what is most likely the best the best big three in the nba between paul george tyrese maxi and joel Embiid. i believe the philadelphia 76ers are at worst a top three team in the eastern conference now i still have the boston celtics who are obviously the number one team in the nba the reigning um nba defending champs so the boston celtics get that respect at being number one and then i do think the knicks even though they did just lose isaiah hardenstein which we'll get to later in the video um i think them having that nova knicks core with julius randall still and you know possibly making some other moves as the offseason continues their team chemistry and the how hard they play i think they're probably gonna maybe finish with a higher seed be more healthy and then you cannot rule out the milwaukee bucks who possibly have the best player in the world who people are kind of sleeping on and Giannis Antetokounmpo and Damian Lillard coming back so I'm thinking that the Philadelphia 76ers are gonna edge out the Bucks because if Joel Embiid is healthy he was running away with the MVP last year um and then we've seen that he actually had his best playoffs of on this recent playoffs in 2024 and Tyrese Maxey had just been getting better every year he's an all-NBA guard all-star guard deep range can score can play make and then we know what Paul George brings to the table even though he is 34 years old and is not as good as he used to be and i actually do have a couple of gripes with his game he doesn't necessarily show up when the lights are brightest and when you need him too but he will be the third best player on this team and with the team surrounded by a good coach he's not the best player he's not going to be looked to to score and create in late game situations and with them just losing tobias harris i believe that he can really slide in in that tobias harris role play defense he can probably even focus in on the defensive end more now that you have Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey knock down his open shots he's one of the best catch and shoot players in the league he can still get a bucket off the dribble and attack closeouts and even iso buckets as well so this was the biggest move of free agency and I would give this great for Philadelphia 76ers an A um you were already a contender and now you're definitely one of the top five contenders in the league and now you're just pretty much banking on health so good job for the Sixers now the biggest move that was made today other than the paul george move was clay thompson just recently signing a deal with the dallas mavericks as they outbid the lakers the sixers the magic and whoever else may have wanted clay thompson's abilities he's going to be signing a three-year 50 million dollar deal in a sign and trade to dallas as dallas will be losing josh green who will be heading to the charlotte hornets but doesn't matter when you can add a sharpshooter like clay thompson now his defense has regressed just a bit he is not a poa defender how he was in 2018 17 16 and back then but he still has that same you know kind of shot in one of his down years which was this year he still averaged 39 percent from the three he averaged about 20 points after the all-star break and he had a lot of things really going on within the golden state warriors um franchise but now going with luka Doncic and Kyrie irvin it's the same thing for clay thompson you have stars around you all you have to do is catch and shoot they just signed ig marshall which i cover later in this video so he's not the poa defender pj washington is still going to be taking some of those matchups he just needs to be a cog in this defense and just, you know, be a good team defender. He can take a little bit, you know, of energy off and just really relax, shoot the ball at a high level, attack some closeouts, and he's going to do wonders for Luka and Kyrie. Um, one of the biggest things why they lost the NBA Finals was because their lack of shooting. I mean, Derrick Jones Jr. couldn't hit above the break threes. P.J. Washington couldn't hit that many threes. Josh Green, all of these guys, Maxi Kleber. They were not reliable shooters and you just possibly got a top three reliable shooter of all time and he still has that flamethrower ready to go awesome signing for the mavericks just a completely uh, a good off season with naji and clay 
And then, you know, Lively coming back, getting better. Luka coming back. Kyrie coming back. Uh, Mavericks are going to be scary next year. Congrats to them. Next up, let's talk about Contavious Caldwell Pope signing with the Orlando Magic. He signed for three years for $66 million. And I'm not going to spend too much time on the rest of these. I got the big fish out of the way. But Contavious Caldwell Pope signing with the Orlando Magic is obviously a great move for the Orlando Magic. They made their first playoff berth in a minute with being led by Paolo Boncaro and Franz Wagner and that whole little young core. And they took the Cleveland Cavaliers to seven games. Paolo showed that he is ready for the playoffs and he can be somewhat of a playoff riser. Um, Franz Wagner had some decent games, had a really bad game seven, but he's still a young player anyways. Jalen Suggs is an all defensive guard. Jonathan Isaac has been getting better and getting healthy. They just got a lot of pieces over there and bringing in a two time champion and a premier three and D guy that can bring some leadership. He's just going to make any team that he's on better. And that's what Contavious Caldwell Pope will do. So this is an A-plus signing. It's not, you know, it, there's literally no downside to this signing. He's going to make them better. They're going to make the playoffs again. They have a, a monstrous, you know, defensive unit that they can throw out Isaac and Suggs and Contavious Caldwell Pope. So great job on the Magic for that signing. Next up, let's go ahead and tackle Chris Paul, who is going to be bordering on 40 years old. He's only signing a one-year deal worth $11 million, what I think is going to be his last contract of his illustrious career. And this is a point guard with, you know, just crazy basketball IQ. We all know Chris Paul's game, his legacy, and his body of work. He's going to be playing alongside Greg Popovich, so they're going to be talking basketball for all day. And Victor Wambayama is just going to be sitting there soaking it up and the Spurs, you know, they finally have a point guard that is going to find Wimby and is going to be looking to find Wimby to a fault. I mean, he's going to be looking for him so much, so, so much. You know what I'm saying? And Wimby will never have to point to, to get a lob. He will never have to say, hey, I'm open or troll on the court because he's open. The ball will be in his hands before he knows it. Um, CP will fit in like a glove here. He's not going to, you know, try to do too much. He's four years old. He's not going to try to, you know, take over the games and everything. He's going to he's going to manage the game. He's going to hit his mid-range pull-ups and he's going to get Wimby more involved. Uh, they're not going to win the championship. They're most likely not going to make the playoffs, but he's going to help in Wimby's development and then he'll probably call it a career, but a good move for the Spurs and for Wimby's um, development. I would grade this move for the Spurs about a B. I mean, it's good. You have a playmaker that's going to find Wimby. Not going to move the, the needle too much, but a good move nonetheless. Next up, let's go ahead and just, I'm going to go ahead and go back and tackle what all the Philadelphia 76ers did. And they did sign Andre Drummond back to the team for two years, $10 million. This was the best backup big that they've had in the Embiid era. Of course, we know that Andre Drummond is a rebounding demon, and he can, you know, get 10 points, get 10 rebounds, as if he was like a starting big man. He's pretty good on, you know, playing defense against bigger bodies. He's just going to get his offensive rebounds, putbacks, and everything. And he's actually a very reliable rotational piece, so good job on the Sixers for that one. Then moving on, they re-signed Kelly Oubre Jr., which is a good deal. He was someone that could have walked, but decided to stay once he seen that Paul George was there. They're building a real contender. He signed for two years, $16 million, and that's good. He was a vital call in their offense and defense last year, so good signing there. And then lastly, they also just signed Eric Gordon, one year, $3 million. He is kind of falling off and getting older, but he still has deep range and is a threat from the three. So those are three, you know, rotational pieces. And then you sign the big fish in free agency, which is Paul George. Um, Joel Embiid's coming back off his best season, and he's hopefully going to be healthy. And then you got Tyrese Maxey coming back. He's improved every year, and hopefully he will be healthy as he has been for the most of his career as well. So the Sixers have been doing just a great job. And these are all good moves throughout their free agency period. They did sign Najee Marshall to a three-year, $27 million deal. And Marshall has been playing pretty well these last couple years, especially last year. He shot around 40% from the three, around 42% in corner threes, and he has been a menace on the defensive end as well. And as we know, when this season was ending and how Derrick Jones Jr. was playing, there were you know, questions about him being on a minimum deal, and he well outplayed his minimum deal, obviously. So there were some question marks about bringing Derrick Jones Jr. back, and they decided to go this way which I think is a pretty good decision because I think Marshall is a better player than Derrick Jones Jr. And speaking of Derrick Jones Jr., he will be signing with the Los Angeles Clippers who lost Paul George, and they're going to slide him in to probably start for them, play defense, hit some shots, be athletic alongside James Harden and Kawhi Leonard. 
So I would grade the Najee Marshall signing for Dallas around a B, a good move. I think you got better at that position. He can't necessarily put the ball on the floor and create his own shot just like Derrick Jones Jr. We're going to have to see if that shooting is going to still be able to hold up, but a good move nonetheless. And the grade for the Derrick Jones Jr. with the Clippers, I would give that around a C plus. Uh, just a good move, a good rotational piece that you got $15 million a year for. So I'm not sure if that's quite an overpay or not, but a solid move for the Clippers. And I kind of like what they're building over there uh, post Paul George. Two big moves have happened since the NBA championship have won, and they have both came from the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I'm going to be going ahead and discussing the Alex Caruso for Josh Giddy trade. I think that trade was awesome for them. Giddy was outplayed or played off the court in the playoffs and here and they wanted him to come off the bench going into this year they didn't see eye to eye so they got off of him for what i would say in the present day is a better player and that was caruso he provides stellar i mean top five poa defense he can shoot the ball he can attack closeouts he can run pick and roll and we all know the swiss army knife at the guard position that alex caruso is i think that grade of that trade was an a for the for the oklahoma city thunder i don't believe that they gave up any picks in that as well and then they just got Isaiah Hardenstein this morning, who was a big body that they needed. Chet Holmgren can now move down to the four. He doesn't have to worry about banging with those bigger bodies. And as we've seen in the playoffs and all year, Isaiah Hardenstein goes after every rebound. He has a soft touch. He can play out of the short pick and roll. He's almost pretty much the ideal big man. And as someone that goes for the Knicks, that hurts seeing him go to the Oklahoma City Thunder. So I would give both of these um, moves by the Thunder B plus to an A minus. Great moves by Sam Presti and everyone that were there. Once again, they also re-signed Aaron Wiggins on the team friendly deal as well as Isaiah Joe. Seems like they can do no wrong as they just continue to run their ship over there. And I would not be surprised, honestly, if they won 60 plus games this year. They almost did it this year in a tough West. Everyone's coming back better and they're coming back with a better roster. So the, the, the Thunder are just doing an amazing job. Next up, quickly, I want to go ahead and touch on the Michael Bridges to the New York Knicks. I believe that this makes them around the top three team in the East as well. They gave up a lot of picks for a player like Michael Bridges, who, you know, some people may say he's not worth it or he is. But the team chemistry on this team, I expect to be some of the best in, I don't want to say NBA history, but some of the best that we've seen in modern NBA. These are lifelong friends, and these are not just role players. All of these guys, you know, Jalen Brunson, Dante DiVincenzo, Josh Hart, Michael Bridges, they are all high level to impact players to superstar players with um, Jalen Brunson. Hopefully, Michael Bridges can get back to, you know, defending at a high level now that he's not looked to create so much offense. The New York Knicks also re signed OG and Anobi on a deal as well. So, when you look at the wings with OG and Anobi and Michael Bridges, I'm not sure if you could, you know, draw up a better 3 and D guys that can attack closeouts get rebounds defend the other guys defend the other team's best player hit some threes play and close out games you know they kind of have one of the best wing duos in the nba and then you got a superstar at the one with jalen brunson josh hart is just a rough rider you know he's going to get his rebounds he's going to hit threes when he needs them he can play make he can push the pace and then julius randall is going to be coming back i think julius randall is being a little bit underrated he's a 25 and 10 guy i know that he's had his playoff woes, but the knicks are looking definitely very well and hopefully they can make some more moves as they just lost isaiah hardenstein and get another big body or re-sign mitchell robinson but i think the knicks have done a great job and have positioned themselves as a contender in the nba Next up, let's go ahead and touch on Tobias Harris. Um, he has been set to the Never Realm, and he has been sent to the Detroit Pistons. I think the deal is worth two years, $52 million. Uh, I think that's kind of like an overpay, but the Pistons, man, the Pistons. I don't want to go off into a tangent, but the sometimes when, when the people mention the Detroit Pistons, I just get a little bit depressed, you know? There's nothing necessarily going over there, going on over there that's, you know, interesting besides Kay Cunningham. Hopefully, Ron Holland can bring some life into that franchise. Jaden Ivey, he's cool. You know what I'm saying? I think Wiseman's going to be leaving soon as well. Bagley. It's just it's just a bad vibe over there if you just ask me. Not to hate on the Pistons or any of their fan base or anything like that. Hopefully, things can turn around. But Tobias Harris is coming there. He won't move the needle at all. The team will still be bad. And, uh, yeah, that's just another move that, that was made just recently. So, I decided to cover it. But, you know, Tobias Harris getting the bag. What else is new? Now, quickly to end off this video, I'm going to be discussing a couple guys that stay put. Pascal Siakam is going to be staying in the Pascal Siakam is going to be staying in Indianapolis for four years, 190 million dollars. 
as we know when he got traded here there was a question of if he would stay but i think that playoff run that they had made him realize that this is a good team here the city loves basketball and it might as well stay so he stayed with the indianapolis pacers four years 190 million dollars manuel quickly five years 175 million dollars with the toronto raptors he is probably going to win the most improved player of the year. Um, he's a star. He's a, I don't know if he. I would call him a star guard right now. But by the end of the year next year, he will be a star guard. He has all of the tools to do that. And I think this is a very good deal for the Toronto Raptors. Next up is James Harden, who had a lot of suitors, but decided to stay put with the Los Angeles Clippers. He signed for two years, $70 million. It's going to be him and Kawhi, you know, managing that load over there in the Clippers now that Paul George is gone. And we could maybe see one of the last prime Hardy years where he scores and assists at a high level now that PG is gone. Jonas Valanciunas signed with the Washington Wizards for three years, $30 million. Um, Nothing much to say there. The team will still be bad. Um, Their draft pick was a second pick. Sar is probably going to be looking to play the four as they don't want him to be the five now or you know i don't know why they would have signed him if they did want to play the five so valentunas is going to go ahead and ride away on the wizards for at least a year max christie signed with the lakers four years 32 million dollars i'm assuming that jj reddick and the staff are telling him that he will be getting his minutes he will be you know developing a lot more now that darth and ham is gone royce o'neill signed back with the phoenix suns for four years 44 million dollars Leak Monk signed back with the Sacramento Kings, four years, $78 million. Patrick Williams signed a five-year, $90 million deal with the Chicago Bulls. And Nick Claxton signed with the Brooklyn Nets for $100 million over four years. And finally, Obi Toppin signed with the Indianapolis Pacers, four years, $60 million staying put in Indianapolis.